Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and in this video I want to talk about Abacus Tutorial 1B Part Module from Beginning to Advance. How to ask your video related questions. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about how can we define fillets on edges, how can we define holes, how to define an I-beam as a shell part, how to define an I-beam as a wire part, how can we save the sketch of a part and use it to define other parts, and finally, practical FE points about the comparison of shell elements with solid elements. Here, I want to explain how to define fillets on edges. I want to use the solid part created in the previous video. Now, I want to define fillet on this edge. And after defining fillet, our geometry will be like this. I will define a copy of the main I-beam and define fillet on it. Now I go to Abacus to do this. I click on Part Manager. I click on Copy and I name it I-beam Test. This is I-beam test. I click on create round or fillet. And I select this edge. And I set the radius to 5 millimeters. And I click on enter. Um, the fillet is created. I click on escape. Now I go back to the slides. Now I want to create a hole on the I-beam. The hole radius is 15 millimeters and this is the final shape. I go to Abacus to do this. I click on Create Cut Extrude. I select the plane for defining the sketch of the hole and then I select an edge to define the view. I use create circle, center and perimeter. I create the hole. Its radius is 15 Now I want to talk about this point. When you want to define circular objects in the abacus, this point will be created automatically. This point must be located here or here or here or here. And these are the quarters. If this point is not located on the quarters in the meshing and partitioning procedure, maybe we encounter issues and the geometry will not be meshed or partitioned simply or appropriately. So I use construction lines to locate it here. Construction lines do not affect the sketch or the geometry directly, but they are useful tools for adding features and settings to the sketch and the geometry. Then I add constraint, coincident constraint. And uh, finally, this point is located at this quarter. I click on done.
if you select blind, you must set the depth of the hole. If you select up to face, the hole will be continued to the next face. And if you select through all, the hole will be continued through the whole geometry. Now I select through all. And the hole is created. I go back to the slides. Now I want to talk about creating an eye beam as a shell part. I create a part named eye beam shell. It is 3D deformable base feature is shell and I will use extrusion technique to create the part. To define the sketch of this geometry, first I save the sketch of the solid part and then import it to the sketch of the shell part and use it and then convert it to the appropriate sketch. And finally, we get this shell part. I go to Abacus to do this. I double click on the sketch of the eye beam. I save it as a sketch one. Now I click on create part. It is 3D deformable shell. I will use extrusion technique. I click on add a sketch to import the saved sketch. I select this sketch and I click on OK. Now the sketch is imported and I must set its location. I want to translate it to here. So I click on translate. I click on this point as a start point of translation and I enter 0 and 0 as the end point of the translation. I want to define the shell part as the mid surface of the solid part. So I must define the middle lines of this sketch. First, I use create lines connected to draw an inaccurate shape. Now I want to add dimension. Now I want to convert the extra lines to construction lines. The sketch is completed. The depth is 2000 millimeters. The shell part is created. In the next videos, when I'm talking about defining shell section, I will talk about the middle surface and top surface and bottom surface of a shell part and its relation to the solid part. Now I want to define the eye beam as a wire. I create a part named iBeam Wire. It is 3D deformable. Its base feature is wire. In the abacus, when we want to create a wire, we must define its axis line and then define a profile for its section and then add it to the axis line. Here I want to define the axis line of the iBeam and its length is 
2000 millimeters. So I define it in the abacus. I create a part named I beam wire. It is 3D deformable wire planner. I define the origin and I fix it and I draw the axis line. Its length is 2000 millimeters. As you can see, a part of our sketch is beyond the sketch plane. This does not make any issues for the part or the simulation. And here there is no problem. I must define I-beam profile in the property module. I will do this in the next video. Finally, I want to talk about practical FE points about the comparison of shell elements with solid elements. About the number of DOFs, nodes of a solid element only have translational degrees of freedom, which are U1, U2, and U3. But nodes of a shell element have both the translational and rotational degrees of freedom, which are U1, U2, U3, UR1, UR2, and in some cases, UR3. About the assumptions, in a solid element, the mechanical equations are solved without any simplifications, but in a shell element, the mechanical equations are solved without simplifying assumptions through the thickness direction. About the limitations, a wide range of physics and mathematical techniques can be included using solid elements. But some physics and mechanical techniques such as XFEM cannot be included using shell elements. About the simulation cost, because of the more number of nodes and the necessity of using more elements through the thickness direction, the simulation cost of modeling via solid elements will increase. There are 8 nodes in the first order and 20 nodes in the second order hexahedral elements. But because of the smaller number of nodes and using one element through the thickness direction, the simulation cost of modeling via shell elements will decrease. Actually, there are 4 nodes in the first order and eight nodes in the second order quadrilateral elements. About the accuracy, every structure can be modeled using solid elements, but according to the loadings, the mesh must be refined enough to obtain reasonable accuracy. But only thin structures can be modeled using conventional shell elements. Thick structures must be modeled using solid or continuum shell elements. In the following tutorials, I will exemplify several useful tools and capabilities of the part module. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp, or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk, WhatsApp, and we can make a special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high quality simulations for your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. Now, I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.